Hi everybody, the Jeff at Cutter Masters here. <clears throat> this is just another approach we're going to show you how to produce sharp center geometry on a four flute carbide end mill uh, with um, very accurate center, a coincident center, which means not necessarily center cutting, but pretty much zero about center. So you'd be able to plunge with it, but there's not a lot of chip clearance. Um, center cutting is a little bit different, but we're going to we'll call this one a zero center. To begin with, <clears throat> we're cutting on the opposite side of the wheel from the way we normally do. We're going to plunge cut this. So this is this is a four flute end mill. It's set up to the indexing collar at four flutes. You want to make sure the tool is square to the machine. Now it's important <clears throat> when you're making the tool square to the machine that it's square to these tips out here, not square to that center cut. And the, part of the reason you want to do that is because you want to be as advanced as possible because as you grind down the tool, you're climbing down the helix and the tool is counter-rotating. So you want to make sure that when you're grinding, you're producing using those tips as registration. So, and to do that, you just uh, use a straight edge and just make sure that you, you're lining up with the tips of the tool. This tool's already been pretty much set, so. But just make sure you're checking to the tips and not to the uh, inside face. Now what we're doing is we're grinding, to, to set this up, um, this normally at two degrees, this is going to be set to zero and we tighten it. The motor tower is then set to two degrees this way and this will give you your dish in the tool. So we set that to two degrees and in this case here, um, the wheel is, using, we're going to plunge with this wheel because it's fast, they were tipping the motor up about Oh, half a degree or so, and you'll see why later. <clears throat> the, uh, what, it, what it basically does is uh, um, keeps the flute away from that cutting tip, gives you a little bit of clearance. So what we're going to do, we're going to dial the tool in using the outside of the tool to pick up this particular tool, 748. So in order to get enough travel here, we're going to move this back so I've got some room to move. And then I'm going to move my tool spindle over so I can get enough travel in my, in my y-axis on my machine. We'll bring this in like so. And now we just want to pick this up. Okay, so there's the outside. So now we're going to zero this. I'm going to need some travel, so I plunged it in quite a ways. I'm going to back this up. At this moment, this motor is all the way down. It's as far down as it'll go. And that's about the right setting for your secondary. <clears throat> now we're going to go the radius of the tool. So we're going to go 100, 200, 300, 75. And we're going to add five thousandths just because we want to overcut the center because the wheel has a small radius on the corner. And the tool is tipping away from the flute so it shouldn't hurt the flute. <coughs> and now we should, I'm just going to come around, I'm going to come around the side so I'm going to block your view for a second. Make sure that we're kind of where we want to be and I, I think we're good. Okay, so we're just going to go in and pick up this secondary. So this is a plunge grind. So basically what I've done is I've set up so I get a little bit of travel here so I can index to the four flute positions like so. And we will, uh, so we'll just bring it in. By putting a cloth underneath you can see, it keeps your machine clean and also you can see the grind. So there I've just picked up this grind. I'm going to go to the next flute. Secondary. Okay, now we're going to put the primary on. We're going to bring this up till it's about oh three quarters of an inch below center. Now 
after or till whatever you want, whether it's a seven degree or five degrees or ten degrees, depending on what you want. Anyway, that looks pretty good. Now we got to pick up the center again. So we're going to bring this back. My wheel's at a little bit of an angle. I can't just go straight up or down. So I just want to make sure I've got a good center. So I'll just bring this in until I touch. Okay, and back up a little bit. So you can see there's about a 5 thou air there. So there's my center. <clears throat> back this up. You want to make sure this is all the way forward and the tool's in the correct position before you do that. And now we're going to move away into center. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 75, and it's actually 74 plus 5, 79 in this case. And now I'm ready to do my primary. So just bring it in, make sure it looks like it's where it belongs. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> We're just going to find a little bit of a primary on there. That's pretty much it. I think we'll go a little more. And that's pretty much it. So by, by tipping the wheel a little bit this way, it tips it away from that flute corner which is underneath by just a little bit, allowing you to go past center to compensate for the wheel radius. Um, and basically that should give you a real sharp feature with a two degree dish, everything coincident right about center.